So the accusations, as you say, go back to the early 2000s when he was starring in the hit sitcom, That 70s Show. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 dark truths about That 70s Show. They were mm -hmm. looking for someone who was at least 18. Did you, you lied and told them, or you just kind of didn't tell them the truth? I fibbed a little. For this list, we're looking at the most notable scandals, controversies, and reported facts about the show and its cast. What do you make of these dark truths? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Filming was delayed because of guest star Lindsay Lohan's ill health. In season 7, the actress played Danielle, a hair salon customer who enters a love triangle with Kelso and Fez. Danielle stood you up so she can make out with the adorable new man in her life. Ah, uh, me. That's right. Ah, uh, him. <laughs> Lohan, who was dating Wilmer Valderrama at the time, was thriving professionally, but sadly, she was also struggling personally. She's got six films lined up, including a remake of Disney's classic car comedy, Herbie, fully loaded. And surprise, look who we found hanging around on location at the California Speed. Shortly before she was slated to begin filming, she got sick and ended up being hospitalized, reportedly with a high fever. Naturally, this put a pause on production. Luckily, the actress got better and returned to finish the episode, which was largely well-received. Well, you're sensitive and thoughtful and understanding and very, very sexy. Lady, don't ever stop talking. And you're funny and sweet. And did I mention very, very sexy? Lady, you gotta shut up. Meanwhile, the world learned that she and Valderrama had called it quits not long after. Number 9. It wasn't love at first sight for Mila Kunis and Ashton Kutcher. This Hollywood couple's relationship story often feels like the premise of a rom-com, or two very similar ones. In fact, they both basically starred in that rom-com, albeit separately. I'm not asking you. I'm asking you to show me a restaurant. I mean, I'm the only friend you have in New York. You don't want to complicate that. I know. I'm not asking you out. However, we're going all the way back to the beginning, where their meet-cute was perhaps not as cute as you might imagine. Rumor has it that the pair did not get along at first. Get in the van. No. Jackie. No. Jackie, get in the van! <laughs> Whether or not that's true, Kunis has confirmed that there was no romance between them. Later, she told Glamour that their love-hate relationship continued and that they would go through friendship breakups, particularly during the height of Kutcher's movie career. Of course, the duo has since gotten married and built a lovely family. It's all very, it's all meant oh to be boy. and very, no, it's all good, it's all it good It is things. meant to be. Yeah. What a, I love this. Yeah. I love it, yeah. gang. Number 8. Randy Pearson, the new Eric Foreman. Do you remember Randy? He joined the crew in the final season after Eric left for Africa. So long, Point Place! <laughs> Played by Josh Myers, he starts working at Hyde's record store and sparks fly between him and Donna. Unfortunately, audiences couldn't get on board with this new character, but would you believe it could have been much worse? What are you talking about? Hi, Randy. I like music. Do you like music, too? <laughs> Shut up. Look at my butt. I made it just for you. <laughs> you are so far off. Apparently, the team thought about simply recasting Topher Grace and justifying his drastically altered face and body by claiming he'd come back from his travels a different person. Donna, I'm sure you probably don't even want to see me right now, but I never had a chance to tell you how I feel. Straight from the heart, in my own words. So I made you this mixtape. <laughs> if the audience didn't like Eric being replaced, imagine how they would have reacted if Eric had literally been replaced. We can only imagine this idea was thought up in a circle in some basement. Number 7. The Same-Sex Kiss Controversy Did you know that that 70s show reportedly featured the first kiss between two guys ever shown on North American primetime television? <laughs> The groundbreaking moment in season one between Topher Grace's Eric and Buddy, played by Joseph Gordon-Levitt, didn't receive the best response from audiences. Some disapproved, while others were disappointed because they felt the storyline was turned into a crass punchline. Well, I'm sorry for kissing you. That's okay. I mean, it's... <laughs> Let's just forget about it. Rumor has it that plans to make Buddy a recurring character were even scrapped as a result. At this time, on-screen LGBTQ representation was still very limited, and Gordon Levitt voiced pride in playing the character. 
He did confess that Grace wasn't necessarily his favorite kisser, though, a sentiment that, incidentally, Laura Prepon has also echoed. What was that for? I just wanted to see what it was like. What was it like? <laughs> you were there? <laughs> Number six, rumor has it that Topher Grace wasn't a part of this circle of friends. Eric Foreman was, in a way, at the center of that 70s show, particularly at first. Good news, my dad is thinking of giving me the Vista Cruiser. You're getting a car? Ooh, have I told you how incredibly attractive you are, Eric? After all, the gang often gathered in his family's basement. However, as we got to know the characters better, we started to value them more equally. Per E! True Hollywood Story, Grace apparently resented sharing the limelight and distanced himself from his castmates, who were close. Rumors suggest that when he returned for his series finale cameo, he did his part but proceeded to leave quickly. Sure, he hasn't always been present for unofficial reunions, but we should note that he said everyone in the cast was friends. Plus, he is appearing in the reboot, so it sounds like he might be up for hanging out after all. But all I know is that I'm going to love her and stand behind her no matter what. That is a great idea. Because when you stand behind your kids, it's easier to put, to your, put your foot in their ass. ass. Yeah, we got it, Dan. Thanks. Number five, the sad truth behind Tanya Roberts' hiatus. For the first three seasons, Roberts regularly portrayed Donna's sweet but often airheaded mom, Midge Pinciotti. Kitty, please come with me. I don't think so. No, thank you. No. You know what this is a lot like? Like when you asked me to help you host the bake sale. Only it's different because I said yes. In season four, we learn that Midge left her family to pursue a Broadway career in California. Did she say where she was going? Well, um, she said she was going to California to, to be a star on Broadway. <laughs> Sadly, the truth behind Robert's absence was far more tragic. She decided to step away from her job to care for her terminally ill husband, Barry. However, she made several guest appearances in the later seasons before leaving acting behind for good in 2005, about a year before her husband sadly passed away. Mom? Mitch! <laughs> Unfortunately, in 2021, we also unexpectedly lost Roberts. Still, fans will never forget the funny and lovable Midge Pinciotti. She will be missed. Number four, Mila Kunis lied about her age. You may have heard this story about how Mila Kunis misled the creators to land the role of Jackie Burkhart. You don't want me to go to the concert, is that it? I didn't know if you liked music. <laughs> Michael! But in case you haven't, we'll bring you up to speed. Typically, networks prefer to hire actors who are at least 18 and or legally emancipated because they can work more hours. So the young Kunis fibbed. And so I must have at one point said something to the extent of, yeah, they were like, are you 18? I must have been like, yeah, sure. I was clear, if you watch the pilot, I am clearly a child. Later, when she revealed she'd need a studio teacher, the producers and creators discovered the truth, but she was hired anyway. This means the writers knew she was underage when they scripted that kiss between the 14-year-old Kunis and 19-year-old Ashton Kutcher. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Please stop touching each other. <laughs> was Kutcher the only one who realized how problematic this was? Number three, where did Leo go? Leo, played by Tommy Chong, was first introduced in season two when he hired Hyde to work at the photo hut. Well, I don't expect a lot, man. Like, pretty much if the hut doesn't burn down, it's been a good day. <laughs> the actor was a great addition to the cast, representing the, let's say, hippier side of 70s subculture. He was a popular recurring character throughout the second and third seasons, and was promoted to series regular by the fourth. But then he disappeared. I don't know what the hell the deal is with Leo. Told me to take a week off from the photo hut two weeks ago, and I haven't heard from him since. He shows up again for the final two seasons with a spacey explanation for his absence. Leo, what are you doing here? It's like the universe wanted us to find each other, man. Yeah. <laughs> so, do I know you, man? <laughs> In reality, Chong had reportedly been serving time for selling paraphernalia that wouldn't be out of place in the circle if you catch our drift. Fear not, though, he's back for the reboot. Number two, recasting Lori. Lisa Robin Kelly played Eric's spoiled, selfish, and callous big sister. Mom, 
Tom, come on, relax. I'm still getting used to being back home. Yeah, flunking out of college can be draining. Phew. <laughs> Eric! Oh, come on, that was so mild. About halfway through the third season, the character essentially vanished, supposedly too busy with beauty school to pay her family a visit. Oh, Lori, tell everyone your good news. I just finished my first two weeks of cosmetology school. And she didn't flunk out. <laughs> but the truth was that the actress had substance use disorder and other troubles in her personal life. She came back for a short time, but Christina Moore was eventually hired to portray the character instead. The latter even reportedly had to reshoot Lori's scenes for the season six premiere. Oh, look, Fez, a genuine Cancun shot glass. Still sticky with tequila. <laughs> oh, you shouldn't have. No biggie. Some guy left it in my room. <laughs> Sadly, Kelly's difficulties continued, and she had a few run-ins with the law. In 2013, she checked into rehab, but unfortunately passed away while there. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Danny Masterson's trial. Since 2017, several women have accused the actor of non-consensual misconduct dating back to the early 2000s, around the time he was playing Stephen Hyde on that 70s show. And get me a beer, son. <laughs> okay, Dad, sure. And a beer for my dad. His transgressions were explored in Leah Remini's series Scientology and the Aftermath. It discussed how the organization, of which Masterson is a notable member, covers up such allegations. Again, they will lie because Scientologists believe, and I was a member most of my life, I know that I lied, right, to protect Scientology. While the actor repeatedly denied the claims against him, he was fired from his show The Ranch, let go by his agency, and faced criminal charges. In 2022, jurors failed to reach a unanimous decision on his case, resulting in a mistrial. His new trial is slated to begin in March 2023. At this time, I find the jury hopelessly deadlocked. On count one, there were two votes of guilty, 10 for not guilty. On count two, four guilty, eight for not guilty. And on count three, five for guilty, seven not guilty. 